So one way it sounds like you're balancing motherhood and career is making some tough choices. Yeah. You are a working mom. You have this production company. You are um, releasing music and you're a wife. You're a mom. You're a friend. All You're wearing all the hats. So how do you... How do you choose to balance that? Or how have you found balance with all that? I, I don't feel like I balance it well, honestly. I, um, I try my best, but there are days where, you know, the chores don't get done mm -hmm. in my house. You know, somebody wants to wear their favorite shirt. Well, welcome. It, it, yeah. <laughs> That's my choice. That's it's, the one I make too. The, the last thing is like, well, I could do laundry or I could do all these other things that feel more important. Well, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an issue of one's more important than the other, but I do think one fills your tank and the other one drains yes. it. Yes. You know, so I think that's an important thing to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Lauren Lucas. I'm obsessed with learning and I live for true authentic connection. I'm a wife, a working mom, professional singer-songwriter, and an instructor of songwriting at my alma mater, Belmont University. You could say that life's a little full. I'm always looking for a way to sneak in some me time with great friends, good food, and meaningful conversation. Here we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the wonderful. My guests include well-known recording artists, hit songwriters, film directors, wellness coaches, and creative entrepreneurs. Plus, we throw in a delicious beverage, an easy weekend recipe. Think of it like happy hour, but better. I'm Lauren Lucas. This is The Happiest Hour. It's the happiest hour when I'm with you. It's the happiest hour. Let's raise our glasses to doing this crazy life together. Keeping it real can't get much better. As long as I'm with you, it's the happiest hour. Oh, a quick PS. My plan is to bring you a full season of the happiest hour. But let's be honest, as a busy working toddler mom, work-life balance, at least for me, can be a challenge sometimes. So I might skip a week here and there. Here's what that means. No matter how you enjoy the happiest hour, whether it's through the YouTube live video or through your favorite podcast app, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the latest episode. That way, you won't miss a thing. Cheers! Cheers! Welcome to the happiest hour. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being my guest. Yeah. I'm really excited that you're here. I'm excited to be here. Because, <laughs> you know, having a drink with a, with a good friend on a Monday. We won't. I know, right? We won't tell them what time it is. Sorry. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's late enough. Yeah. Always late enough. Okay. So it's interesting. I mean, we've been friends for a long time. We've written together a lot. And when I was considering what it is I want to ask you, there are a lot of questions I don't know the answers to. I'm very excited. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Starting with, um, you are a beautiful vocalist, great singer songwriter. Um, you're, you're incredibly talented in your own right. You also happen to come from country and pop music royalty. So was it a foregone conclusion that you would be musical? Did you want to be something else when you grew up? How, how did, did you want to be, some, what did you want to be when you grew up? When I was little, I always thought I would be a rock star or a pop star. Okay. I think because both of my parents were all into music from as, from as long as I could remember. That's all they did. Mm -hmm. So it was all I knew. And the lifestyle was, I mean, it was really fun. The buses, all the different venues and backstage and just kind of what we all see as the glamorous side of this industry. Um, it's a, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And so, it just made sense to me. I could easily get into this industry mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. I wanted to. And I felt like I had natural talent as a singer. And so I didn't at the time find any other options that interested me 
okay. that, that, that were as interesting to me as music. Okay, my parents do this. I could do this. Yeah. I never, in the way that they did when they were little, I never told myself there's no plan B. Mm. So in other words, there was a plan B. I, I think I always saved something else for myself just in case. Okay. Um, I, I always said, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, I'll figure something else out. Okay. But I also, unlike my parents, I never found myself in a survival state of being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I never had to feel hungry or really wonder how my how am I going to pay my bills next month. Um, very blessed and lucky that I can say that. But at the same time, there was no opportunity for me to have a fire lit. Mm. I have to do this or else yeah. I might not have a roof over my head. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, um, so as I got older, I started to find other things that, that were fun and, uh, and just as passionate about. Yeah. So, um, had I, ha had I not had that, well, I could have a plan B if I went into music like there's no plan B I have to do this I have all these stories I have to say and I have to do it vocally you know it might have turned out different but yeah that just wasn't that wasn't my path yeah understood yeah. understood okay so even when dad Vince Gill mm -hmm. huge record deals um a freaking eagle now I mean come on what is that it's what, crazy what is that like it's crazy I mean he grew up I mean he listened to the Eagles when he was a kid. I mean, he wow. was, you know, he was in a band when he was very young called Pure Prairie League. They mm -hmm. were trying to be the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And now, now he tours with them and it's just, it's insane. It's, ast it's astounding. It's like, so your cool. Your dad is an Eagle. It's just, so, it's amazing. Thank you. I went and saw one of their shows recently and just, I just cried the whole time. <laughs> it was just, it was really overwhelming. And, and he has a great he has a great time with them. Yeah. And your mom, the band that she was in, is was that with her sister? Is that am I remembering this correctly? That's correct. Her sister, Christine. Okay. My mom's name is Janice. They are the sweethearts of the rodeo. Yes. Okay. And do they still tour? They don't tour, but they'll play together. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You know, here in the Nashville area. They play the Bluebird every year. Oh, nice. And they get together and sing and do random shows and you know it. Back in the day, back in the 80s, it was Mom and Christine. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that were bringing home the bacon. Yes. Before Dad's career really took off. That's and right. So yeah. my earliest memories of my parents working are actually my mom being gone mm -hmm. all the time. And then once Dad's career started to take off, I think Mom and Christine, I think they just got a little worn out from the road, and mm -hmm. they were moms at that point. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to stay home and be with their kids. Yeah. Understandable, right? Yeah. That's like it's a thing we're all trying to balance now, too. You know, regardless of where our careers are, um, and then your stepmom, Amy Grant. So you you have seen all of these people close to you, these huge record deals, <laughs> huge tours. But even when you're with a major label or a big production company or management or whatever, you're not an employee of those companies. You are still your own little business really sure so all of the major um family influences i guess i would say in your life are really ultimately creative entrepreneurs is that i mean i would say that's, that's the way i see it at least mm -hmm. what so what did that teach you i mean whether it was seeing your mom decide to get off the road to, to be more of a mom or stay-at-home mom or whether it was seeing your dad and, and amy go out like what has that taught you to be around all those creative entrepreneurs um, well, I think in the case of dad and Amy and my mom, um, I feel like along the way they were always true to themselves. Mm. So whatever songs they were writing, whatever they were presenting on stage was an actual authentic piece of who they are. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely taught me to just be who you are, be real, be authentic, because that's what's going to get, um, 
of the best response mm. from from whatever audience you find yourself in front of. Um, I think that's what audiences and what what people are craving is is um, realness and people being authentic. It's you're the most relatable that way. Yeah. Um, the 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 time required to pursue those things has an effect. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it necessarily taught me anything, but I mean, to this day, I'm still working on the effects, not having my parents around all the time, those effects on my childhood. I'm still working on those today, mm. you know, and it's, you know, it's a sacrifice, but, <clears throat> but I happen to be s surrounded by incredibly talented, amazing people. It's weird. And, and I don't always want to share them, but I've, I've been forced to, mm. but you know, it's, I, I would say the biggest lesson they've taught me is to just be true to yourself. That's, that's the best way to present yourself to the world. Yeah. Well, it's so true. And it's, it can be difficult because especially if you're out in the spotlight there's a big, at least there's a big part of me that wants to be seen as perfect. I want every hair in place. I want my vocals to be right. I want whatever it is. And there's also this sense in the last 10 to 20 years with social media of just, in some ways, it is like a real weird highlight reel mm -hmm. that's not real at all. And then sometimes they're also like, it's a place to be like messy bun and whatever. I don't know. There's, it's like a strange dichotomy. Um, but I think that it's, I think, whether you're doing social media, whether you're touring, whatever you're doing, I agree with you. People really respond much, much better to just realness. You're right. Yeah. I think it's hard to look imperfect or to, you know, say, say something that isn't super poised or whatever. And in those times you feel like you trip up, those are the moments that people I think love you or whoever the most. Mm. Because that's when you become relatable. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. nobody is all put together all the time. It's not, it's, it's so unrealistic. Yet I think we're being tricked into believing that that is realistic. Yeah. And you're right to describe it as a highlight reel, what we're being fed all the time. And it's really easy to compare yourself to something that just isn't, it's real when you have a team of 10 people <laughs> right. around you all the time, making it, making that your reality. Mm -hmm. But none of us are walking around with a glam team right. and a nutritional expert mm -hmm. and an, a, a personal assistant. Like, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's easy to kind of view yourself as not good enough or not pretty enough or any of that. And it's all just, that's all just a bunch of BS. And so I try really hard, on, at least on my Instagram account, to just keep it as real as possible. Yeah. My kids really made me mad today because whatever happened, I share all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think moms really need to be reminded of that. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of moms, especially in today's society, are really becoming isolated. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? That was something, like, people kind of told me, like, hey, postpartum depression might be a thing. Or, um, you know, hey, if you don't like what stage your kid's in, like, give it a few weeks because it'll all be different. And if you do love it, give it a few weeks because it's going to be different. Sorry about your luck, you know? I mean, there were some things people told me, but the one thing nobody told me and prepared me for was how isolating motherhood is. And I don't know if that's different today than it, than it was in generations past, but it was, it was true for me today. And I know a lot of other moms I've talked to are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> why, did, why did no one tell me this? It is incredibly isolating. Yeah, that first year, we, I, don't, I didn't come up with the term, but we refer to it as the baby cave. <laughs> because that yeah. first year, and that, you know, I don't know. I don't think past generations quite experienced it the same. I think there was much more of that. You know, the saying, it takes a village. I think yeah. moms actually had a village 
you know, and we're, we're also separate. I mean, it feels like we're so connected with our devices, but we really are separated in our own homes. Mm -hmm. We are all so busy with all these other things we need to do to provide for our families. And yeah, we're stuck at home just trying to figure it out. And Mm -hmm. that first year with my firstborn was so hard. Mm -hmm. I know I was postpartum, but I was too scared to admit Mm. the um some of the dark thoughts that I had Mm -hmm. I was ashamed of it I didn't Mm. tell anybody about it and I I probably could have really benefited from some I don't know medication somebody Mm. helping me um but I was too scared and you know I eventually you know got out of that phase yeah I joined the Y I started moving around that That is a huge it's a huge help a lot um, and another great thing about the why, like that you can just give them your child. Oh, okay. So here you go. So I had my child during, like as lockdowns were starting during COVID. Oh, so, man. and I for sure experienced postpartum and figured that's what it was. And I have just an amazing counselor I've seen for years and years and years. And he did zoom calls with me and it, and I'm, I wish you had had somebody because it really, that's you, we all need that support, whether we're postpartum or not, frankly, <laughs> but yeah. particularly if we're postpartum. And I was too scared to get out of my house for he was preemie and all the things were happening. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we were really scared and stayed in for quite a while. I just found the Y daycare <laughs> like when his school let out the spring. We lived there over the summer, lived there. The Y saved me. Oh, yeah. It saved me. I could just got, I just got an hour break and I did a dance blast class, they called it. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, it was the only way I can trick myself into exercising. I remember when you were doing these dance blast classes. I was, you, you I was like into it. it. Do you still do them? No, I need to go back and you you should come jazzercise with me. I just, I love it. If if you're dancing, if we're dancing, it's not exercise. No, I know. Yeah. It doesn't count. I love it so much. And then I just, I don't know, there's something when you remember the dance from the last few (laughs) weeks, you know, and then it clicks and you remember that step. It's just so many, so many things I love about it. And I, yeah, I got, I got really into it. It's also nice because you're using your brain in just in a different way. And especially in that first year postpartum, I mean, it is just baby, it's just baby central. It's hard to really find that adult interaction. And so just helping your brain tick, I think, and the movement, as you said, I mean, total game changer. Yeah. It's, it was, it was quite a shock to my system as I'm Mm -hmm. sure it is for all first time moms. You're just like, what Mm -hmm. is all that? Like everything changes. Mm -hmm. And it only, it doesn't only change for you. But we're bearing the lion's share of the brunt. Our bodies, yep. our milk production, our whatever it is. I mean, it's like we're uh-huh. just we're bearing the brunt of it. And it, it's the way it is. And that's fine. I, just a warning, a warning label <laughs> would have been nice. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you, you have all these expectations of what motherhood is going to feel like. And then mm-hmm. when you maybe find yourself in a place where none of those expectations are happening it's really easy to feel disappointed like maybe i made a mistake here and it can be really hard but we're we're amazing strong creatures Mm -hmm. and so you know i think part of it is just being kind to yourself yeah and and you'll figure it out okay so i want to go back to keeping it real on social media okay. because you, uh, I mean, you even say it in, I think in your bio on Instagram, you know, keeping it super real. So often, I mean, I follow you and I love what, you know, seeing what you have to, to show and to say every day. It's often no makeup. It's like dashing off in the car. It's cooking dinner. It's your kids running in the background. Yeah. I mean, it is it's super chaos. real. So what, um, I mean, A, I guess, why is that important for you to show? And B, is it scary to keep it that super real? Or does that come really natural to you? Because, I mean, I I like to share stories and thoughts and things that are real, but I'm not keeping it quite that super real because that scares the heck out of me. So explain yourself. <laughs> well, I don't know why. I don't know why I started presenting myself 
that way. Honestly, I think I just was wanting to be different. One, um, I also, I am not the fact that I have any makeup on my face, like this is out of the norm for, for me. So I'm not, I'm not trying to play a real character online. It really is just who I am. I don't like makeup. Mm. I don't like fashion. Like I don't, it's just, those aren't things that interest me or that I get into or get mm. excited about. Mm -hmm. And so what I share on my social media are things that I'm just dealing with that day or that I think are funny. Mm -hmm. Like really it's about if I can make somebody smile or even better laugh or giggle, like then mm -hmm. that's my goal is to make people laugh. And <laughs> we do a great job of it. Thank I mean, you. You're, you're hilarious. <laughs> and you have even toyed with comedy and you and your girlfriends have made these little short um, parody skits for yeah. years. And, and y'all have been doing that or some version of that a oh, while. Wow. I mean, for like at least 10 years or so. We've, we've been, a, we call ourselves a, a wolf pack. And yeah, we're just, we're just ridiculous when we get together. It's like, it's like in middle school when you go to a sleepover and all the girls just are being silly and laughing and yeah. everything. I mean, that's, that's all it is. Yeah. Our friends that um, we can just be completely, um, we just welcome we just welcome each other mm. as we are. And yeah, sometimes we we get a cocktail or two in us and we just get some silly idea. And me being the person who loves to film everything, what if we did this? And yeah, we started making these, we call them one minute movies. And they're so stupid. Oh, they're stupid and hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's bridesmaids, you know, it's on fun. crack. Kind yeah, of. it's just fun. It's, you know, why not, you know? <laughs> Okay, so you, uh, so you yourself are entrepreneurial in that you have been a singer-songwriter for many years. You have music released. Um, and then in the last few years, at least, you have decided to go behind the camera. Mm -hmm. You have your own production company. Mm -hmm. Are you producer and director? Am I saying the right terms? So because I'm, I'm doing a lot of learning in a whole new industry, I do wear several hats and in through the journey of learning more about TV and movie production, I, I start already starting to see which hats I like to wear better than others. Mm. Um, but there's a few folks, you know, other directors that I've met that have asked me to produce some things or assist, you know, be a director's assistant on music videos. It's, it's something that I didn't even realize has always been an interest. Mm. Like, like I just said, playing with my friends when we were young, I always had whatever camcorder mm -hmm. there was on the market. I had one and I would direct my friends, Hey, let's do this kind of funny video. You do this. And then you're going to come in. Like I would direct my friends and film it yeah. when we were like 10 if there was a school project of some kind in high school, you have to give a presentation to whatever. I was the kid with my class group. What if we make a video? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then so that's just, always been something. It's always been in there. And I never thought that it could be a job. It mm. was just a hobby I really enjoyed. And when I had the time to do something, I would, I would do a project. It could be a slideshow for a friend who's, has an engagement party coming mm -hmm. up and they want to show all these pictures on a projector or whatever, I would put that video together. So how did it start to become part of your career? COVID. <laughs> it was COVID. Okay. Um, because up until that point, I had been touring with Amy as one of her backup singers. Mm -hmm. I toured with her for a solid 10 years. I thought I would only work with her for maybe a year, but it turned oh. into, it turned into 10. Such an incredible experience. And I know. I, so I do want to hear about how yes. film production turned into your part of your career. I also, and maybe you're about to, but I, I want you to share a little bit. I remember when you posted about this, it was a really difficult decision for you to get off the road with Amy and not either sing as much or maybe not at all. I'm not sure now what you might be doing, but explain kind of how you came to that decision and what that decision making was like as a, as a mom, as a 
creative, all, all the things. Yeah. So, so I uh, started working with Amy in 2010. That was the year I got married. And so, um, she, by the way, is the most incredible boss and the, mm-hmm. and the band that she had at the time and still to this day has are incredible people. It was, a, it was a true family. It was, it's the perfect gig mm. is what it is. Ugh. And I miss it. I miss it. Um, when COVID hit, nobody was touring. I had just been gifted an actual camera, mm. like a nice Canon camera that could do stills and video. Okay. And I bought, you know, I maybe it came with a lens and there's nothing to do. So I spent a lot of time on YouTube learning about manual mode on my camera and, you know, how to light a scene. Okay. The importance of audio. I just, I just lived on YouTube on all the basics of production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to film a music video. It was just me and the artist. It was terrible. (laughs) But I, so we won't say who that is, but I did it. (laughs) It wasn't great. It was my, and, and that's like expecting your first song that you're ever going to write is going to be a hit. Right. Right. I mean, it's, you know, you got to start somewhere, Mm -hmm. but I was, even though the outcome wasn't something I was eager to share, I was eager to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot of things. And then I found another artist who was willing to work with me. And I got a lot better on the next one. And then I learned, okay, it would be even better if I had a few people helping me. Mm. It's impossible to wear all the hats. Mm. That's the first lesson I learned. Mm. You can't light the scene and hold the camera and direct and press playback. It's just, it's too much. Now I, I understand why film crews and TV cro- crews are so massive. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, one project would lead to another. I'd meet somebody there that would lead to another project. And then it just dawned on me. I could do this, not just as a hobby. Mm-hmm. People are willing to pay me money to help them with videos. So I was hooked. Yeah. And then when touring started to come back onto the scene, Amy was booked out on the West Coast, I think, for three weeks, maybe three weeks and some change. And it, the tour requested whoever goes stay out there the whole time mm-hmm. because it's too expensive to fly in a sub, fly out mm-hmm. somebody else. So it was, it was an all or nothing situation. And I was not willing to be away from my kids for that amount of time. So that was, that was the moment where I had to uh, step down from, from touring with her. It was a really hard decision, but I never regretted it Mm -hmm. because all those nights I was snuggling my four-year-old daughter. I didn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I made the right decision. That's great. Yeah. It feels doesn't that feel so great when it, it is difficult, but it's also clear. Yes. And it can be both. It can be like, nope, I know what I have to do and it sucks. I have to do it, but can't be all, all places. Can't be all places. And I think because I had this, such a strong memory of what it felt like to have my parents gone all mm. the time. That was another reason that I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to choose to be home, mm-hmm. you know, because missing mom is a terrible feeling. How old were you when your mom got off the road? <clears throat> I want to say anywhere between six and eight or nine. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, you that know? was a, a big chunk of your yeah. childhood. Yeah, and I, I have I have so many memories of like going on the road, playing on the bus, and we're running around like crazy people backstage. And but then I remember there were times it didn't make sense. I would be in school. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a nanny living with us, and you know, the nanny isn't mom. You want you just want mom. Yeah, yeah. And so it didn't take long for her to <clears throat> to make that decision to stay home full time, and yeah. I was glad that she did. 
So how, so one way it sounds like you're balancing motherhood and career is making some tough choices. Yeah. You are a working mom. You have this production company. You are um, releasing music and you're a wife. You're a mom, you're a friend, all you're wearing all the hats. So how do you how do you choose to balance that? Or how have you found balance with all that? I I don't feel like I balance it well, honestly. I um I try my best, but there are days where, you know, the chores don't get done mm-hmm. in my house. You know, somebody wants to wear their favorite shirt. Welcome. Yeah. (laughs) That's my choice. That's the one I make too. The the last thing is like, well, I could do laundry or I could do all these other things that feel more important. Well, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an issue of one's more important than the other, but I do think one fills your tank and the other one drains it. Yes. You know? So I think that's an important thing to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. That's well said. Yeah. I can, I could spend all day on the house and making it look like it's ready to be photographed for a magazine. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to have any patience for my kids. I'm not going to want to, I'm not going to be the nice fun mom Mm. because chores drain my emotional tank. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important you call it self care or whatever, but spending time on things that you do enjoy and fill your tank. And, and so what, if you have a a messy pile here and there, something doesn't get done. I think it's better that we're, uh, mentally stable. (laughs) (laughs) I, I agree. Fair enough. Fair enough. But it's true. It's like there, there are things, especially when you, you're your own business owner. It's like when you have to get some things done for your business and you want to get those things done for your business, it's a passion, it's fun, it's lighting you up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important to listen to those things and to, and to do that. And, and I think, you know, for people who might be floundering, wondering what that is, I think, you know, spending some time trying to find it is important. I think it's really important. I mean, there are days I've stayed up till 1 a.m. finishing an edit on some video project. um, And I just know I'm going to be tired the next day. Mm -hmm. But I just push through it and I just do the best I can every day. I I also try to be mindful of, of not letting things get too backed up or, you know, I hear my kids being like, Mom, you know, Stop looking at your phone. I want to show you this. You know, mm-hmm. I, I that happens in my house a lot. Mm-hmm. You have to be like, all right, you have to be mindful. Okay. Yeah. Actual connection with them is is really important. Yeah. And there's, you know, each day you just gotta you gotta sacrifice something. There's not enough time. There's not enough time in the day to do all the things that I think are required of us. Mm-hmm. And and we, I, I think we just have to learn like to just let some things go sometimes mm-hmm. so that we can be happy. Yeah. Because we deserve it. That's right. Cheers to that. Oh, man. man. How am I doing? Doing great. Yeah? I mean, Woodford, come on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so question I ask all my guests. Mm-hmm. If your songwriting, the releases you've had, your production company, the tours... If that were to all go away tomorrow, mm. what what do you want to leave behind? What do you want people to know? Oh man, it's, it's a tiny that? little question about legacy, really. <laughs> Just the That's smallest, all. little, simplest yeah. question. What would I want to leave behind? What would I want people to know? Yeah, um, that. I worked really hard and made an effort to be the best version of myself Mm. for, for the people who, um, for the people who loved me and gave me the things that I need. Um, relationships are really important. Probably the, the most important thing in my life. You ever done that strengths finder test? I don't like it's, like it's the Clifton strengths. I don't know the proper name for it, but I took this test and it's supposed to tell you all your top strengths and all of mine were relationship based. Hmm. And so I, I, 
I would want to, I would want people to know that, that I, I loved my family and I tried my hardest, um, to, to love them back the way they loved me. Mm, that's sweet. Mm. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being my guest today. Thanks for having me. It was so great to have you on. Thank you for and to get some um, questions answered, things I didn't know. And and you you got ingredients for one of my favorite drinks, and then gave me gave me the ingredients, and now I'm drinking the drink. <laughs> there you go. I'll have to give Josh a little bit of credit too for the for the recipe. He deserves all the credit because <laughs> he totally came up with this all by himself. He did good. He did real good. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find Jenny on Instagram and Spotify and all the places I will link to it below. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Oh, that was so much fun. I wish I could talk to my guests for hours. If you want more from the happiest hour too, make sure you head over to laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour for the show notes, recipes, and products mentioned in the episodes. And you can learn how to access Happiest Hour bonus content. Oh, and if you're looking for a way to make true and authentic connections with other people who are music lovers, who want to carry on the conversations that are started on the Happiest Hour episodes, and who are friendly and supportive, join my exclusive online community. It's absolutely free, and we would love to have you. I run fan contests there from time to time. I do free live stream concerts. The link is waiting for you at laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour. Until next time.